Today in this 2010 Honda Odyssey, we will be having a look at and showing you how to install the Durali Series 8000 Plate Fin Transmission Cooler, part number D13502. Now here's what our transmission cooler looks like installed. For video purposes, we've left off our radiator cover panel here so you can see what it looks like. The reason you're going to want an auxiliary transmission cooler on your vehicle is because the number one killer of automatic transmissions today is heat. By adding an additional or an auxiliary transmission cooler to your vehicle, you can help lower the operating temperature of your transmission, thus extending the life of your fluid and the overall life of your transmission itself. Now most vehicles such as this Odyssey here that are equipped with an automatic transmission already have some sort of a transmission cooler built into them. On this Odyssey's case, it's built into the vehicle's radiator. Now, while this is adequate for most situations, if you find yourself towing a trailer or going up mountainous terrain, especially with the trailer, you'll want to have some form of auxiliary cooling for your transmission. And by adding in our transmission cooler in line with the factory transmission cooler, we are adding increased cooling capacity for our transmission fluid and even increased transmission fluid capacity as well. And now that we've gone over some features of our transmission cooler, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we need to gain access to our radiator area. In order to do that, we'll remove this cover panel. We have eight plastic clips just like this. We have four going across the back and four going across the front of the panel. The way these clips work, there's a center section. You pop it up with a flathead screwdriver. Then we can use a trim panel tool and pull the whole section out. All of these clips are the same way. With all of our clips removed, we can now grab our panel, lift it out of the grill opening, slide back and out of the way. Now at each corner of our fascia where the grill meets near our headlight, we have a push pin here that we can pop up the center section. And pull it out. We'll do the same for the other side. Now on each side of the fascia grill opening area on the back side, we'll have three Phillips screws just like this. We'll remove these screws. Okay, at each corner where a chrome grill is on the inside, we have a push pin fastener. It's upside down, but you can still work it out just by pushing on the center section here from the top. And it'll go down, and then you can pull it out. We'll do the same for both sides. Now we'll grab our chrome grill and pull it forward away from the vehicle and set it aside. Now we'll remove these two screws by our emblem. Now we can pull our emblem away and we can separate our grill support from our fascia. Now where our AC condenser has a bracket that supports it to our core support, we'll remove the 10 millimeter bolt. We can take our bracket, slide it off the condenser. We'll do the same for the other side. Now we can lift up on our AC condenser and pull it forward. Now we have room on the back side of it to attach hardware. Now we need to remove this underbody panel here in order to gain access to our transmission cooler lines. In order to do this, we'll find several fasteners just like this one here. These work just like the fasteners on top where we pull out the center section and the whole section pulls out. With our underbody panel removed, we have clean access to our two transmission lines. 
One of these is the return line and one is the output line. We need to hook our transmission cooler up to the return line because this is the one that's gonna provide the cool fluid from the factory transmission cooler to the auxiliary transmission cooler that we're installing. In order to determine which line is the return line, you can start the engine, put the vehicle in drive, put your foot on the brake, and rev up the engine a little bit. And after a few seconds, you can put it in park, shut off the engine, and grab these two lines, and whichever line's the coolest is the return line. We determined that this is our return line, so we're going to remove this small section of hose right here. So when we use a pair of slip joint pliers, loosen this hose clamp, slide it back onto the hose off the barb, do the same for the other side. Now we need to pop this hose off of our radiator fan assembly. It has a clamp which is clipped to the assembly. Okay, there's one of the clips. Okay, it's unclipped on both ends now. We can now pull the hose off the fittings on our transmission and the radiator. Quick tech tip, it's a good idea to wear gloves while you're doing this and have a bucket underneath you to catch all the fluid. Now we'll pull it off the transmission the same way. You may need to rotate it a little bit with a pair of pliers if it's stuck. You can also use a pry bar to push on the hose to help get, release it from the fitting. Now we need to prep our new transmission cooler for install. This is the back side of it. We have these adhesive foam tabs, which will act as an isolator between our transmission cooler and our AC condenser, so there's no metal-to-metal -metal contact. Peel off the back side, and we'll line it up over a hole, and apply one at each of the four corners. Now we'll take our mounting rods, go through the hole on each of the four corners, making sure we go through the hole, and our foam backing. Now we need to mount this on our AC condenser. Our mounting rods will go through the fin area of our condenser, just making sure we don't puncture an actual fin. We'll put this as close to the driver's side of the condenser as possible, because that's where our transmission is and as close to the grill opening as possible, that way we get airflow through, and we'll push our mounting rods through. We'll take our mounting clip, making sure the divots will face towards our AC condenser, and we'll pull it down the mounting rod until it pulls the rod tight. We'll do the same for all four of our rods. We can now cut off the excess of our rods. Now we can take one end of our hose and we'll slide it onto one of our fittings on our transmission cooler. Now I put some transmission fluid on my finger. It's a quick tech tip. If you put that on the fitting, your hose will slide on easier. Now that we have our hose on a sufficient amount, we'll take one of our clamps, slide it on the other end, and work it up towards our fitting. Now we'll secure our clamp in place onto our hose, thus securing the hose to the cooler. We'll tighten it using a quarter inch socket. So we routed our hose from our transmission cooler over towards the driver's side, where it goes between the gap between our radiator and our core support. And we can see it underneath the vehicle after that. And here's where our hose came through. I stuck it inside the clips that the factory hose was to help hold it in position. Now we'll measure off how much hose we're going to need. Cut off the excess. We'll slide a hose clamp onto the hose. And this hose will put on our radiator fitting. Now we'll tighten the clamp down. 
Okay, with that clamp secure, we can now move on to our second hose. We went ahead and hooked up the other side of our transmission cooler hose and routed it the same way as our other side. So here's where our hose comes out and it's right in line with the fitting on our transmission that we need to connect to. We'll cut off our excess hose now, slide our hose clamp onto the hose and then slide the hose onto our fitting. And now we'll tighten that hose clamp down. Okay, with all of our clamps now tight, we can now start our engine and check for any leaks. Okay, with our engine running and with us verifying that we've had no leaks at any of our four connections, we can now reinstall all the panels that we removed. Okay, now that we have all of our panels reinstalled, this is a great time to check our fluid level in our transmission via the transmission dipstick, which is this yellow handle located between our battery and our engine. We'll make sure we check it using the procedure as listed in our owner's manual, and we top it off with the appropriate fluid, which is also listed in our owner's manual. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Durali Series 8000 Plate Thin Transmission Cooler, part number D13502 on this 2010 Honda. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.